Hi, beautiful people. Welcome to the Fort Salem Library, where we read you your fanfiction. So sit down or don't, relax or don't, and enjoy these stories in a way you have not before. We at Fort Salem Library do not own Motherland Fort Salem or any of the related characters. The Motherland Fort Salem series is created by Elliot Lawrence and owned by Freeform. This story is a work of fan fiction and is meant for entertainment only. We are not making any profit from these stories. All rights of the original Motherland Fort Salem story belong to Freeform. We also do not own All That Remains or any of its original characters and storylines. We did, however, get permission from the author to read their story. This story was created and written by TrueFreak89, and you can find a link in our show notes. This story is being read to you by Angela. All That Remains, Chapter 5 Walking along the side of the road, Rail's gaze was constantly scanning the immediate environment taking in every broken-down car and empty house as a potential spot for freakers to be hiding. Beside her, Scylla moved like a feral cat. Her ears picked up and her sharp eyes searching for signs of movement. She was confident, moving both purposefully and light-footed all at once. Scylla was the first one to notice a stray freak up ahead of them. She pointed it out to Rael with a silent nod. Rael paused, cursing under her breath. It was a newt a term they used to describe infected children. Rael hated newts. They were slippery little bastards and hard to pin down, not to mention what it took out of her to kill a child. Even an infected one. It spotted the group and hopped down from the overturned truck it was climbing on, approaching cautiously with its large bug eyes fixed on the group. Scylla signaled for the family to stop behind them. None of them asked why. They walked in a tight-knit formation, the children between the adults and... All as silent as the grave, Rael could see how they had made it so far on their own. There weren't a lot of children back at the Iron Mountain. Few had survived the initial outbreak. It would please Alder to see two more walk through the doors. The grandmother covered their children's eyes with their hands, pulling them both in close against her as the newt ventured closer. Rael took a deep breath, setting her nerves for what she had to do. It never got easier to kill a kid. Beside her, Scylla reached down and pulled a knife out of her right boot. She moved before Rael got the chance, striding up to the newt and grabbing it by the scruff of the neck. She sunk her knife through its eye socket, killing it instantly. The thing that had once been a child crumbled to the ground, its glazed white eyes open but unseeing. Rael's mouth hung open as Scylla casually wiped her knife clean on her shirt before returning it to the sheath tucked into her boot. She beckoned the family to carry on and kept walking. Rael fell into step beside her. Have you killed a lot of freaks? Rael asked, making conversation. I'm alive, aren't I? Scylla gave a shrug. That same damn mischievous smirk playing on her lips. What about you? Rael looked down at the floor as she answered. More than my soul can take. The infected. They're still people. I mean, what if we find a cure, you know? I disagree, said Scylla, turning her head to look at the other girl. There is no humanity left in any of them. There's nothing left to save. They're just empty shells. I think it's kinder to end them. Maybe, Riel reluctantly agreed, kicking an empty coke can with her foot. Scylla could tell Riel wasn't a killer. She could see it in the guilt in her eyes when she spoke about taking out freaks. Rael was among countless witches who would never have enrolled in the U.S. military had they been given a choice. She was all hard and soft edges, and Scylla felt an unexplainable anger building within her at the thought of Rael being forced into becoming a killer. They walked in on silence, following the road towards a town they'd met in the day before. Rael came to a stop. She was close enough to signal the rescue party, who should have left the base by now and been well on their way to get them. Rael fired up a green flare into the air, followed closely by a blue one, signaling she was safe and had survivors with her. She brought a hand up, shielding her eyes from the early morning sun as she scanned the skyline for a response. 
second stick by, her anxiety growing with each one, until a double green flare appeared on the horizon. The rescue party was close by, and they were coming for them. Riel sent out a double green flare of her own, acknowledging the response. Elated at knowing her people were on their way, Riel scanned the area for a place to wait for them. There were a few buildings lining the road, but they posed a threat of housing freakers shielding from the sun. Further down the road, she spotted a truck. We can wait there. Sil and I should check it out first, though. Let's go, Sil agreed. They left the family behind and approached the truck cautiously. One of the back doors was already open slightly, a sure sign there were probably freakers nesting inside. Riel took out her scorch and used it to strike the side of the truck from a distance. As soon as it clanged off the metal, a low murmur started up from within the truck. It quickly rose to a high-pitched screech as the doors flew open. Scylla reached for her knives as four infected spilled out of the truck. Riel stepped in front of her, her arms at her sides and her wrists curled upwards, waiting for the freakers to come close. Riel! Scylla hovered behind her, anxious as the freakers closed the distance. I need them closer. Whatever you do, stay behind me. Riel growled. Her teeth clenched and her eyes narrowed on the advancing freakers. Once they were within distance, Riel brought up her hands with a cry, producing the wind strike seed and ripping the four freaks to pieces. She stumbled back with effort, dazed from overexerting herself. Scylla caught her, keeping her on her feet. Riel was still catching her breath as she said, Thanks. I, uh... I needed them close to do damage. I'm strong with my unit, but alone, four is a big ask. You did great, Scylla squeezed her shoulder, letting her go only once she was sure Riel was steady on her feet. The family joined them beside the truck, and Scylla peered in first to check it was clear. She ushered the family in when it was. Ladies first, Riel stepped aside, offering to let Scylla follow the family in. Mm, I'll take watch. The other girl shook her head, a playful smirk dancing on her lips as she used the handles of the back of the truck to hoist herself up and climbed onto the roof. Grinning to herself, Rael poked her head inside the truck to tell the family she and Scylla would be close by, then followed the other girl's lead, scrambling up onto the roof. She caught Scylla sitting cross-legged with her eyes closed. You're kind of a terrible lookout. Scylla opened her eyes slowly, the richness of them catching Rael off guard every time. How was it possible for someone to have eyes that startling in actual life? Riel shook herself mentally as Scylla stretched out, tilting her head back and basking in the sun like a cat. I was just taking a minute. Choosing to stand, Riel took her binoculars out of her pack and scanned the horizon for any sign of the rescue party. She couldn't see anything yet, but the town looked quiet. Only a handful of freakers were roaming around. In front of her, Scylla looked deep in thought. Riel took a seat beside her and started picking out the dry mud on the cuffs of her pants. Have you reconsidered staying at the base? You don't quit, do you? Scylla asked, looking more amused than annoyed. Riel shrugged with a grin. Not really. Scylla rolled her eyes. A smirk still glued to her face. Iron Mountain isn't for me, Riel. What is? Royal pressed on. There's nothing out there anymore. There's freedom, said Scylla. Royal frowned, becoming defensive. So what? You don't like witches? I don't have a problem with witches. It's more the military I don't like, or more specifically, it's slavery. In the end, that's all a conscription is. Royal felt a curiosity peak. She hadn't met many civilians with an opinion on conscription, and she said as much to the other girl. Scylla gave a dismissive shrug, her slender shoulders bunching up under her oversized worn-out jacket. You don't need skin in the game to care. Before Riel could say anything in response, Scylla stood up. She pointed at something in the distance. Someone's coming. Riel followed her line of sight and spotted the supply truck. Her face lit up at the sight of it. Though, her smile faded as Scylla announced it was time for her to go. Wait. She caught the other girl's arm and stared deep into her mesmerizing eyes as she pleaded with her. Give the base a chance. You've been on the move a long time. You can rest at the base. 
It's safe and we'll give you supplies. We can contact other bases if you're looking for someone or some place. Give it a few days. Please. It's gotta be better than going out in the shit unprepared. The truck moved closer and closer to them as Scylla bit her lip. She was losing time to make a break for it, which was the right thing to do for her. But on the other hand, Riel was right. She only had enough food for a day or two, and sleeping in an actual bed for a few days would do her a world of good. Riel was wrong about one thing, though. Scylla was safer out in the shit than she would be at Iron Mountain. With the other girl still holding onto her arm and truck fast approaching, Scylla had no choice but to relent. Forcing a smirk, she tilted her head to the side, her eyes dancing over the other girl. Free food and a warm bed. You sure know how to sell it to a girl, Rael, she teased, her smirk widening at the sight of Rael's cheeks reddening. I'm glad I could convince you. Me too, beautiful. Me too. Rael climbed down from the truck first, reaching up to help Scylla just as the truck pulled up a few yards behind them. The family emerged from the inside at the sound of it. Rael let go of Scylla's waist when she was safely on the ground and turned to wave at the occupants of the truck's cab. A beaming Clive waved back at her, while Anacostia glared at her. Despite her frosty appearance, she was happy to see Rael, and they both knew it. Abigail and Telly were the first ones to climb out of the back. Rael felt an overwhelming flood of relief at knowing they were safe. She threw her arms around both of them when they ran up to her. Tally and Abigail squashed the smaller girl into a bear hug as Abigail growled at her. God damn it, shitbird! Never do that to us again! Do you hear me? I miss you too, Abs. And you, Tell. Rael buried her face in Abigail's shoulder before pulling back to find Tally looking curiously at Scylla. She made the introductions introducing Scylla and the rest of the family to her squad. The two girls kicked into soldier mode, reassuring the civilians that they were there to help. Iron Mountain is impenetrable. You'll all be safe there, Abigail said, speaking in what Rael and Telly coined her High Atlantic Authority tone. The base is run by General Alder herself. Scylla's eyes widened for a second, but she quickly covered it with a forced smile. I feel safer already. Abigail missed the sarcasm in her voice, but... Rael didn't. She eyed the other girl out of the corner of her eye. She knew Scylla's view on conscription, so it would be easy to guess how she felt about Alder herself. Anacostia stepped up to introduce herself to the survivors. My name is Lieutenant Anacostia Quartermain. I'm an officer at the military post known as Iron Mountain. We can offer you food, shelter, and community. And above all else, safety. Scylla bit the inside of her cheek to keep from scoffing, while the family fawned over the military. Once the pleasantries were out of the way, Joe and his family climbed into the back of the truck with help from Tally and Abigail, while Graves and Saint took watch. Anacostia clapped Rael on the shoulder. Call her. It's good to see you in one piece, she said, her expression neutral and her voice clipped. She moved in close to whisper. It wouldn't do for me to lose my favorite private. Rael barked with laughter. It felt good to be back among her people. Seriously, though, I'm glad you're okay. The civilian you were partnered with reported you dead. What happened? A would have been dead, had it not been for Scylla here. Rael gestured to the girl standing beside her, and Scylla shrunk, offering Anacostia a demure smile. We ran into a nest. The douche pushed me when we ran for the door and left me for dead. I locked myself in the service elevator. I only got out because Scylla got the power working. Thank you, Anacostia nodded at Scylla, who looked like she wanted nothing more than for the ground to open and swallow her whole. We'll adjust the charges. He's in a cell back at the base. You have cells? Scylla finally spoke up, forgetting her plan to blend into the scenery. Anacostia turned her attention back to the civilian. Yes, for people who deserve to be in them. And who decides that? Scylla asked, her voice tense. Rael felt like her insights were being churned up in a meat grinder. Anacostia was the closest thing she had had left to a parent figure. And she had a weird desire for the lieutenant to like Scylla. General Alder does, she answered, as if that should have been obvious. Scylla didn't back down. Crossing her arms over her chest, she said, 
And who decides if she deserves to be in one? And Acostia eyes narrowed. We all knew from the expression that was never a good sign. I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. You are? Riel stepped in, trying to defuse the tension. Lieutenant Quartermain? Still not only saved my life, but that entire family's too. She got them here from the session. And Acostia's frosty exterior melted slightly at the revelation. That's impressive. There's always a place for people like you on my scavenging team if you're interested. Thanks, but I'm only staying a few days and then moving on. Scylla replied. Moving on? And Acostia frowned. To where? There's nothing left. Sina shrugged, everything about her defensive. I'm not the type for settling down. You're a drifter. Anacostia's disdain was thinly veiled as she looked down on the younger woman. We've had problems with drifters in the past. I hope we won't have any with you. No, ma'am. I won't overstay my welcome. Glad to hear it. But you're welcome to stay as long as you want, Riel stepped in. Everyone is. Right, Lieutenant? Of course. Anacostia nodded curtly, still glaring daggers at Scylla. Something about the girl was off. Anacostia could feel it in her bones. Everyone is welcome at Iron Mountain, so long as they pull their weight. The implication was clear, and to her credit, Scylla didn't look away as Anacostia glared daggers at her. Anacostia looked away first, clearing her throat before shouting, All right, people, let's move out. We're sitting ducks out here. Ass in the truck collar. Yes, ma'am. Rael faltered as Scylla reached out for her hand. The young private's brain shut down, giving her the mental capacity of a pubescent teenage boy as she let Scylla lead her hand in hand to the back of the truck. Help me up? Scylla fluttered her eyelashes, and Rael was certain it was entirely for Anacostia's benefit. After all, she had just watched the other girl climb effortlessly on top of a truck. Rael helped her regardless placing her hands around Scylla's waist and helping to lift her as Tally caught her hand and pulled her up. Riel scrambled in after her. The last one in, she pulled the tailgate shut and signaled Clive to drive with a bang on the wall. The truck lurched forwards as he got the message and Riel took a seat next to Scylla on one of the two benches running the length of either side of the truck. It had once been used for moving troops back at Fort Salem, but now served its time ferrying cargo and survivors. Tally sat at the far back entertaining the two children, who seemed to have perked up exponentially with the arrival of the military, while Abigail and Hillary sat reassuring the adults that the base wasn't too far away. Riel let herself relax for the first time since she'd set foot out of the base yesterday, her head leaning back against the side of the truck while her thigh pressed up against Silas. We'll be back at the base in time for a late breakfast, Hillary announced, and Riel's grumbling stomach liked the sound of that. We have dorms for large families and communal stores for clothing and toiletries, etc. You'll be very comfortable at Iron Mountain. What's the catch? Riel's eyes opened at the sound of Scylla's voice, her tone still defensive. Hillary offered her a patient smile. Eighteen months after the world went to shit, the soldiers of Iron Mountain were used to dealing with skeptical civilians who assumed their hospitality came with an expectation of something in return. No catch. We expect able-bodied civilians to work and the children will need to attend school. But that's it. The base is a community. General Alder believes that. Together, we can rebuild the society we once had. Scylla didn't look convinced, but she fell silent anyway. Riel wondered if the other girl had some sort of bad experience with another community. Stories were rife around the base of survivors who fell in with the wrong people after the infection spread. Things like slavery and cannibalism were not unheard of. Riel felt certain Scylla would like the base if she gave it a chance. She hoped to persuade her to stay for longer than a few days. Maybe permanently. She placed a hand on her own knee, her little finger brushing lightly against Scylla's. Scylla, who had her back against the wall like Riel, and her eyes closed, reached across, taking Riel's hand in her own and squeezing it. The ride back to the base was uneventful. The clear weather kept most of the freakers inside, and the roads were already clear from their trip to the town from the day before. Sula held Riel's hand the whole way back. Her grip tightened as they stopped for the guards on watch to open the gate for them. Riel gave the other girl's hand a reassuring squeeze as they parked up, and Anacostia appeared at the back of the truck. 
The lieutenant unlatched the tailgate, and the civilians and soldiers inside of the truck piled out. The civilians looked on in awe at the impressive entrance carved into the side of the mountain. And Acostia led them all inside and over to the elevator that would take them down into the base itself. The children looked nervous, tugging anxiously on their mother's arms. So I knew how they felt. Rayal had let go of her hand getting out of the truck and was yet to take it back. Sila shoved her hands into the pockets of her jeans instead, trying to hide the way they were shaking as the elevator traveled deep underground. Don't worry, Tally offered to frighten children a white smile. There's nowhere safer than the base, okay? Scylla had to disagree. She closed her eyes, feeling her stomach sink further and further as the elevator descended. Coming to the Iron Mountain was a bad idea. She should have left when she had the chance, even if Railcaller had been pleading for her not to, with the prettiest eyes Scylla had ever seen. The elevator lurched to a stop deep underground, and the occupants spilled out. Scylla stuck close to Rael feeling strangely safe with the girl she'd known for less than a day. And Nicostia turned to address Hillary. Saint, take the Robinsons to a free dorm. Scylla can stay with them for now. We can arrange a room if she decides to stay. Scylla bit back the urge to tell her it wasn't. Rael was looking at her like some hopeful puppy up for adoption in a store window. Can I take them? Rael offered, but Anacostia shut her down. Sorry, Private Color, you are needed by General Alder for a debrief on what happened yesterday. A civilian attack on a witch is no minor charge. Alder will want to hear all about it. We'll help them settle in, Tally spoke up, holding the hand of the little girl. It looked like she'd made a new friend. Riel wasn't surprised. Tally was good with kids, she had the patience for them. Unlike her and Abigail. Sure, Abigail agreed, reaching to take Riel's backpack from her. Catch you back at the dorm? Riel nodded, promising to meet them there when Alder was done with her. She caught Scylla's eye and gave her a smile. She'd make a point of seeing Scylla after too, just to make sure she'd settle in okay. Please find a fanfiction you just listened to on Archive of Our Own and leave the author some love. Without them, this wouldn't be possible. And we want to thank them from the bottoms of our hearts for creating these amazing stories and keeping the show alive.